Hello, I'm Scott Flowers with Cloud Ninjas. And today we're here to talk about Dell PowerEdge R230 server memory upgrades and how to properly configure your server. Well, thanks for stopping by today to learn a little bit more about the Dell PowerEdge R230 server. Do us a favor and uh, click that like and smash the subscribe if you find anything helpful today. Well, let's get started. First things first, this is the uh, next gen from the R220, which accepted DDR3 memory. Well, now the R230 is going to be the first generation from Dell, the 13th gen, which accepts DDR4 memory, which is pretty awesome. Uh, let's go over the uh, CPUs. There's uh, one CPU socket. It takes a couple of different uh, Intel processors. The most prevalent and what we recommend is the E3 1200 V5 or V6 series CPUs, but there's a number of different other ones that you can use. You can also use uh, Intel Core i3 6100 series CPUs. You can use Intel Celeron G3900 series CPUs. You can also use Intel Pentium G4500 or G4500. 4600 series CPUs. Yes, there's a ton of different CPUs you can use, but what we find to be the most powerful is the, the E3 series CPUs. It just seems to be the uh, most bang for your buck and the best performance, okay? Uh, from a memory standpoint, uh, there are four DIMM slots. It takes DDR4 memory. Uh, you can max this machine out at 60 four gigabytes. I just wanted to do that. I thought it'd be fun to do the force. Uh, but you can max this out at 64 gigabytes. Um, there's a couple different sizes that you can use. Uh, you can use a, a four gig module, you can use an eight gig module, or you can use a 16 gig module. Unfortunately, this machine does not accept 32 gig modules. We definitely tried it and we even switched out a bunch of different processors to see if it would work. 32 gigs just aren't accepted in this machine. Uh, you can use a couple of different speeds. The lowest being uh, 2133 megahertz, 2400 megahertz, or you can go all the way up to 2666 megahertz, which means that the max when you do do 64 gigabytes would be the 4 by 16 for 266 megahertz. Um, there's only one type of RAM that is accepted. It is ECC um, buffered, which is also known as a server UDIM. Uh, unfortunately, you can't use ECC registered. Uh, you can't use ECC load reduced. Uh, RDIMs and LRDIMs are not supported by this machine. It is solely ECC unbuffered. Uh, we have customers who run in that era a lot where they think that they can put uh, registered modules in. Uh, they're a little bit cheaper than the unbuffered, um, and they think, hey, I can you know, pop this in and it'll be a, a, a cheaper upgrade for me. It doesn't work, unfortunately. It's the, the same thing, honestly, for all the you know, 210, uh, 220. It's just it's the same problem you're using ECM unbuffered, okay? Uh, so let's go ahead and open it up now that we know a little bit more about the machine, um, and I'll show you about the, uh, the memory channels, how to properly install the, the modules, and the, what the proper configuration is if you're not maxing it out. But before I get in, uh, the first thing you should always do when you get into machines is wear your ESD gear. So I'm going to grab my ESD gear, and I'll be right back. All right, we're back and we have our ESD gear on, so we're safe to open the machine. First things first, check out the latch. Make sure it's set to unlock. Pop the tab open, very simple. Lift it up, just like uh, any other server you've really ever been in. Now that you're in, you will notice a couple of different things. Uh, you know, you'll see the back plane here for your hard drives. Uh, you see all your fan modules. Uh, you have your uh, air baffle here, and the air baffle is uh, over the CPU and the memory modules, and this is just to con help control airflow and uh, keep the system cool. Uh, you also have over here your um, uh, your power supply, and you'll notice that the uh, power supply on this one is cabled in. It is not hot swap. Uh, this is important to note because uh, some of the machines out there um, do have hot swap. This one doesn't. So anyhow, first things first, you want to take this air baffle up. Just lift straight up. Just be careful not to accidentally snag any of these cords that are around it. And now that we're in, you will notice here's the one CPU and here are the four DIMM slots. The DIMM slots um, are labeled by Dell to make everything a little bit easier. But if you're not familiar, I want to point it out that uh, this is going to be your first slot, the white slot right here. And this is going to be your second slot. This is important to note. So let's say you were only going to put in, let's just say, two 16 gigs, and you wanted to put in 32 gigs total, or maybe two 4 gigs or two 8 gigs, whatever the case may be. You want to put them in the two white slots. Uh, the, the importance of this is you want to have an even distribution um, across your load for your memory. This basically increases the performance, uh, and it doesn't overload uh, one memory channel and you have a nice even distribution across all the channels. Uh, for this machine, since there's only two channels total, it's not as big of a deal, uh, but there's a lot of servers out there that will have 
you know, uh, a total of eight channels, um, and you want to make sure that you're uh, just have an even distribution. So this is just good knowledge to know for any server in the future, okay? Um, so we're going to go ahead and actually install this. We're maxing this out to 64 gigabytes with these uh, 16 gigs that we have here. And before we do, I want to note a couple things. You will notice there's a notch right here, also known as a key. Uh, this key is important because this key is actually uh, in a different spot on different modules. So, for instance, you couldn't physically put a DDR3 module in here. You couldn't physically put a DDR2 module in here. Uh, just as, as a helpful thing that the manufacturers do to prevent users from making errors. But it's also important because if you look on the DIMM slot itself, there is a, a, a notch that's coming up. So what this means is you have to line the module up perfectly. Okay, so like right here. Uh, the modules lined up correctly, but if I were to accidentally flip it around and I wasn't paying attention and I loaded it, the module is off by about a half of an inch, okay, as far as the, the notch is concerned. So this can lead to one of two things. One, you could accidentally damage the module itself, which would mean the module is broken, you have to buy a new one, no one wants to spend money on uh, on, on replacement parts, uh, and two, it could actually damage the, uh, damage the dim slot, and the bad part about damaging the dim slot is that means you could actually have to replace your whole motherboard, and that's not cheap by any means, so nobody wants to have a user error and that costs them money, so just simple things, line your modules up, pay attention to what you're doing, uh, anybody can make these errors, I don't care if you're a brand new technician or you've been doing it for 20 years, uh, these little things are really easy to make mistakes on, especially on dual socket CPUs, or I'm sorry, dual socket motherboards that have two CPUs, a lot of times the notch actually flips sides uh, and people are just not paying attention and they accidentally jam a module in and break it. So just, just some user, user friendly advice that we have for you, okay? So one of the things I always like to do before I get started, I pop open all the tabs, just make it a little bit easier so I'm not fumbling around when I get in there. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and line this up. Uh, the f and I'm gonna, I'll do it the way that you're, you're supposed to do. Is, this is the first channel. One of the things that I actually do when I'm um, uh, loading it up completely is I actually like to start where it's the, the snuggest. So right here, it's, it's a tight fit between if I were to have a module here and the heat sink, putting the last module in can be a little bit difficult. Nothing that's you know too hard to do. Anyone can do it, but it's just a little bit difficult. So sometimes I actually start in the snuggest and work my way out. But I want to do it the, the proper way in case you were only putting in two. So you'd start uh, in channel um, uh, A1, so the A1 slot right here. And another thing to note, you see I'm not touching the module. The module's in. The module looks like it's in, but you see the tabs are actually still pushed out. Uh, the module's not fully seated. We run into issues a lot where customers think that they have a bad module, but the actual module is not seated. So we tell them to rotate the modules around. They rotate it around and they end up properly seating it, and then they realize that it was actually just um, a user error. So this is one way you can tell. Listen right here for this click. Hear that click? And you hear it on both sides. Now the module's fully seated, and you see the tab has pushed in. Okay, so this module is now fully seated. Uh, it's a, unfortunately an all too common error that we hear daily uh, from users who think that they've um, uh, think that they have an issue, and it's it's just really just needs to be uh, seated better. So uh, now let's say we were only putting in two modules. Okay, this is the proper configuration in the two white slots, two white slots skipping the black slot again for just a proper. Uh, even distribution for your memory, okay? Now we're gonna actually finish loading it up, but I just wanted to show you in case uh, you were at home and that's all you were doing was putting in two. Now I will try and tell you right now and talk you out of only putting in two. Uh, we personally think uh, putting in four 16 gigs uh, really is the only way to go for this machine as far as just getting the best performance out of it. But that's the nice thing about the R230 is it's such a, a cheap machine. Not everybody needs the best performance out of it, and they just need to do some simple daily tasks. They don't need to max it out, and they can get away with you know maybe 16 or 32 gigs total. Okay. Um, so all right, now it's in just like that. I mean, literally took I mean 30 seconds a minute. Um, if you were doing it actually and not doing a video and talking, uh, it would be very easy to do. So um, now that we're done, we're just going to simply uh, put the air baffle back on. And it fits in beautifully, and it's very simple to put back on. And then you're just gonna pop the uh, the, the top back in. So really, the R230. Um, that's one of the great things about it as a whole. Uh, it's a very simple machine. It's very user friendly. Um, a lot of companies love to use this for some of their, their more simple applications or even some of their simpler customers. Uh, consultants love these for 
uh, taking them on site to customers because they're not too big. Uh, they're definitely a, a smaller system, and if you weren't racking it, you don't have to. Uh, you can get away with the tower as well for some of that kind of stuff, but if you didn't have a tower, this is another great solution. So anyhow, uh, wanted to say thank you guys for stopping by. Hey, if you made it this far, do us a favor and smash that subscribe. If you're looking for any upgrades yourself for your R230s, um, do us a favor, reach out to sales at cloudninja.com. That's sales at cloudninja.com. Uh, we just got in a bunch of 16 gig ECM buffered uh, 2666 modules, and we'd love to help you guys upgrade your machines. So thanks again for stopping by, and you have a wonderful day.